Okay, I'm now going to work through an example where we're just going to do this conceptually. So the goal is to analyze our situation, draw the interaction diagram, and then draw the free body diagram. Once you have the free body diagram, you would actually be able to do calculations, but again, the physics comes up through the free body diagram, and after that, it's just math. So I'm focusing here on the most important things. So in this situation, you have a tow truck that is pulling a car. So they are going down the road, and the question is, what are the forces involved? So we want to get to the fact where we've actually drawn free body diagrams for all of our objects. So I want to identify my system. This is my system. And then I'm left with an environment, and I see that my environment involves the surface, and it will also involve the Earth, where gravity comes from. And I then want to label what my objects are. So I have my car. I have my truck. Am I done? So something to note in this situation, and we will simplify this a little bit in uh, the fourth section of this chapter, there's a rope here. So we can't ignore the rope yet. Uh, later on, we'll learn about a simplification we can make and not worry about the ropes, but the rope is actually going to be our third object. So this means that we have from the surface, um, the surface is going to interact with this object and with the truck, the car and the truck. The rope is not on the surface, right? So we don't need to worry about the rope interacting with it. The earth interacts through the long range force of gravity. So the earth is going to interact with the truck, the rope, and the car, all three things. Finally, note that the car interacts with the rope and the rope interacts with the truck. The car in this case is not directly interacting with the truck because they are not in contact. The rope is what's connecting them. So we've identified our forces. Then what would our interaction diagram look like? We're going to have three objects, our car, our rope, our truck, and we see that we have two pairs of forces that were the circles that I drew here in red. So these are both pulling forces. The rope is pulling on the truck, the truck is pulling on the rope, and we have then our surface forces between the car and surface, surface and the truck, and that the rope also has the interaction with gravity. So all three of them have gravity. So one thing to note is that this isn't just a box. This outer line here is actually gravity, not just a decorative box. So we have a lot of forces here. And how many free body diagrams are we going to draw? In this case, you should be drawing three free body diagrams because there are three separate objects in our system. Now, we don't need to worry about drawing a free body diagram for the surface or for the Earth because those are in our environment. So, on the next uh, slide, I'll show you the free body diagram for, the, uh, for all three of these that the book has done, but let's try to make a little progress first. So I think the book free body diagram is going to be much more clear than what I can draw by hand, but let's start a little bit. So let's try to draw the car. So I'm going to start with the car. And the other thing, let's, so again, I had said that these are, are going forwards. Let's also say that they are accelerating forwards. Okay, so their velocity is in the, oh, I love coordinate systems, are in the positive x direction. And we're saying that they're accelerating that way. That means that for the car, we know that there's going to be a net force in that direction. So what does that mean? Well, let's start with the easy one. So again, here I'm working on the car. And so first I have the gravity force. That goes straight down towards the Earth. And I'm going to label that with a C, since that's the force of gravity on the car. I then am going to have my normal force, and I'm just kind of marking it off here to know that I, I've gotten it, and that's going to be up. And that's going to also get a C because that's the normal force on the car. I then have a friction force. So 
this is the friction force on the of the surface on the car. And again, this would be kind of like a rolling friction force. And in many cases, it might be small. But let's let's actually consider it here, given that it's on our interaction diagram. You would maybe ignore it if you've been explicitly told to ignore it. But in this scenario, it's pretty important. So friction in this case would cause this car to slow down, right? If the rope suddenly broke, we knew that the car would slow down. So we would say that the frictional force on the car is acting backwards. And I'm not really going to worry about whether, um, you know, the size of it. So last, we have the rope. Now, this is a little tricky. Notice that the rope is curved down a little bit. It isn't perfectly horizontal. And this probably matches your experience. Imagine a rope or a chain connecting two things. It hangs down a little bit. Now later on when we talk more about ropes and strings we'll talk about why we frequently consider them perfectly horizontal and in this case in this problem we're not going to do that. So I'm actually going to say that my rope pulls down a little bit and I'm going to say that's R on C for rope on car. Now once we say it pulls down a little bit, we want to label this theta. I don't know what theta is yet. We're going to need to find it. Now, the next thing to realize here, once I've said that this R on C has a Y component because it's not perfectly horizontal, this means that my normal force and my gravitational force are also not equal. So be careful about this. And we'll talk more about this on the next slide. So let's do now the rope. And again, I'm labeling it. So now, does the rope have a net force on it? Well, yeah, because the rope is also accelerating horizontally. Right? So the rope is also accelerating, so it ne needs to have a net force. So let's see. If the rope on car was kind of down, what does that mean about car on rope? That needs to go equal and opposite. So this is car on rope. And now we don't have friction or normal force to worry about, but we do still have gravity. And this will be GR for rope. And then we're going to have the truck on the rope. So what is that going to look like? Well, that's going to look something like this. Again, it's going to act up for the same reason that it there is the angle for the case of the other two. So truck on rope, we're going to label this angle. Now note that you have this downward angle theta here, so that is actually going to be the same theta as here. Why? Let me remind you that in this case I am basically labeling this as theta over on the left, and so this is the angle I'm labeling as theta on the right. It's, it's z. Whenever I see a z, I know those interior angles are the same. But now I don't necessarily know that this angle is the same. Now later on, we might be able to mathematically prove that it is. But I don't just have a symmetry that that's the case since these forces are not e necessarily equal. So I'm going to call this phi. I'm going to call this a different angle. Now, I'm going to show you the free body diagram that the book has drawn. Obviously, I haven't done it for the truck yet, but I want to talk you through it. And I will admit that I don't remember if the book was assuming that the truck and the car were accelerating or not. So there's some small differences that you would uh, change on the free body diagrams, depending on whether they are accelerating or not. But the goal of this was to just draw the forces accurately. So notice that the car looks just like how we drew it, that you have your normal force, your gravitational force, your frictional force, and then the tension from the rope, so rope on car. Now one thing that I neglected to do, shame on me, was that you then connect that with the pairwise force, the, the action-reaction pair, which was the car on the rope. So you do that connection. And so a few modifications that I want to make to what the book did was, again, we need to say something about our net force. And now I was saying that our net force was uh, 
horizontal because we had an acceleration of the entire system. And again, I just don't actually recall if the book thought that was the case or not. But if they are all accelerating together, they all go to the right. And that's something we'll talk more about um, in the next section. So notice that we would have an angle theta here, angle theta here, angle phi here. And again, I'm calling it something different because I don't necessarily know that these angles are the same. And in fact, they're not necessarily going to be. So lastly is the free body diagram for the truck, which is very similar to the car, except that so again, you have your normal force and your gravitational force. You have the force from the rope, which is again a uh, pairwise force with the tension, uh, sorry, the truck on the rope, that tension. But now we have a force that is pushing the truck forwards. Now the book is calling it a proportion fo force. And what you can think about is that this is because the truck's wheels are in fact pushing on the ground. Right? So the car is basically idling. Right, It doesn't have the engine running. The truck has the engine running. And so because the wheels are pushing back on the ground, the ground pushes forwards on the truck, and therefore we have a frictional force that is actually forwards. So the truck is able to actually pull the car because we see that here you have a frictional force that is acting forwards. So the other thing to note is that your normal force and your gravitational force on the truck are going to be larger because the mass is larger. And that's also going to change the relative strength of the frictional forces, but we don't have enough information to, to make any um, specific statements about those right now. So the whole point here was to practice drawing a good free body diagram based on those interaction diagrams and analyzing interacting objects. So to go any further with this, we would need to talk a little bit more about acceleration constraints, which I haven't done. So these F nets are not necessarily equal, but we need to talk about something more before we can say that. And we would need to understand a little more about how we can treat uh, ropes and the tension in ropes. So those are going to be in future videos, but getting to this point is something you should be able to do from here. So a quick summary is that every force ex exists as a pair. So we call this an action-reaction pair, but it's symmetric. It's not that one force is always the action and one is the reaction. But of this pair, both forces are equal in magnitude, but they act in opposite directions on different objects. We need to define what our system actually is, which is going to be the object or objects that you are analyzing. The environment is everything outside of that, which is frequently going to be the surface and the earth, but it could be additional things like people pushing and pulling. We need to actually denote those action-reaction pairs on our free body diagrams. You do that by carefully using subscripts and by drawing dashed lines. Finally, what we call propulsion is when an object is able to push themselves forwards. What they're actually doing is pushing backwards on another object, such as a surface, and then that reaction force pushes them forwards.